Yeah. We say we're going to make a very important call. Yeah. So let's make that call right now. And tell the people who this person Well, I was going to give the grand introduction. Don't style me phone. Just like a review seminar on a credit plan for. I was going to make the grand introduction on well when she answered the phone. <clears throat> Let's make that call right now. Hello. Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh-huh, I can hear you. Yep, sure can. Okay, so we are now on the phone with a Grammy nominated producer, music executive, slash AR slash creative consultant slash <laughs> soldier <laughs> conspirator <laughs> uh, that's good. Christy Barber in the building bless up Christy via phone in the via, <laughs> via, phone. via telephone sorry right <laughs> I'm in the building in spirit right thanks for having me you guys shout out <laughs> So, Christy, we, we decided to call you because you did work on Soldier's record, right? Mm-hmm. And you are one of the few, it seems, that is a part of the reggae community that is bigging up Soldier for this, for this win. Because you've seen the uproar here locally, right? I have seen the uproar, but I wouldn't call it a few. I think that the majority is leaning on their side. On soldier side, mm-hmm. you think so? I do. I know so. <laughs> okay. So before we get into all of that, can you tell the people about the work that you did on their album? Well, I met Soldier back in 2012 when their manager sought me out to talk to me in regards to wanting to um, do more promotion in within the reggae industry, like in Jamaica and get more exposure. So they came to me to work with me because that's what I've done for 30 years. And this was 10 years ago and they'd already been in the industry for 15 years. They had just put out a very big record for them. They had just signed their deal to ATO, which is the label that's owned by Dave Matthews. They go through red light management. Yeah. So um, I had a conversation with them and just to see where their heads were at and everything. And we talked about me doing some servicing of their tracks to radio and marketing and promotion. And I also um, deep dived with them in regards to the Grammys because I've been running an advocacy, an advocacy program since 2004 for 18 years, signing people up for the Grammys. So um, I started working with them on the project they had at that time. I actually had Winford Williams from on stage fly to Puerto Rico and cover Soldier back in 2013. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Christy. You had mm -hmm. Sir Winfred fly to Puerto Rico? Yes. And okay. he came and he interviewed Jacob. They had a big festival there where there was tens of thousands of people. And I thought that would be a good thing for Jamaica to kind of see because it was, it's not a new thing for foreign bands to do reggae music. I've no, been in the not. industry 30 years. It was happening before me. But mm -hmm. there was this movement that was going on primarily in the U.S. with these bands that, um, it, this is what they wanted to do. Then we had to get Jamaican audiences familiar with what was kind of going on in the States and the best platform would be with on stage. So I went for flew to um, Puerto Rico, did an interview with the lead singer, Jacob it, at the festival. They were able to cover the festival and get shots of it just to kind of show the Jamaican viewers who soldier was kind of introduce them to Jamaica outside of people that have already worked with them. Because prior to that, in I think it was 2008, Soldier actually produced a one rhythm album where they voiced Queen Africa, Tony Rebel, President Brown. They worked with Luciana. This was all in 2008. Yeah. So they've actually been working with Jamaican artists, but they just kind of wanted a Jamaican music executive in that space to try to, you know, work them in the proper through the proper channels. And that's how I first met them. So and then I've I mean, and. Every ever since then, when you know, because they've been very smart doing what I've told all of our artists to do since 2004, that Which when is, you have an album release and it's eligible for a Grammy, that you should work the marketing ideas into your overall marketing plan out the gate. And um, Soldier was like a sponge and they just, you know, paid attention and they learned and they took advantages of 
the different opportunities that the Recording Academy allowed for artists in order to kind of get in front of the voters through mm-hmm. either Grammy.com editorials or Grammy U or Grammy Pro. And that's how they ended up being a three time nominee and they they won. So it was just a matter of time before it happened, because these bands have been chugging away at it in America for a very, very long time. They dominate our billboard charts. They dominate the touring here. They've taken several of our artists on tour, tours with them. And they just, this is the beginning of this year, the biggest reggae festival that pretty much happened in America was the Cali Vibes in January, which was the first time that Golden Voice really got behind reggae music. And Golden Voice is the promoters behind Coachella. And they mm. had basically everybody who was anybody on both sides of the fence on that festival, not to mention like the Wu-Tang Clan. Mm. And I mean, Nikki Z was there. She flew up from Jamaica. So it was a very successful festival back in January. OK, so why is it out of all the things that you mentioned that they have done and accomplished that you feel that they won this award this time? Well, I mean, I think what happened, I think what happened this time, because there was a change in the there was a change in the voting procedure this year that I told everybody that asked me predictions and asked me about what was going on. I spoke about it on TVJ during reggae month. A new thing happened that could really change the playing field for uh, especially our field Um, back. The voters could only outside of the general field, the voters could only could vote in like 15 other fields this year. They changed it where you were only allowed allowed to vote in three outside of the general field. So that being said, that would literally force the right people to come to our category to vote. For example, mm-hmm. in a field, there are categories. In the reggae field, there's just the reggae category. Mm-hmm. If you if you go to the rap field, there's they have maybe six, cad, six, maybe four categories in there. So here's the thing. If you can only vote in three, so a lot of people will be like, well, if I go to reggae, then I only get to do one category. But if I went to rap, I could do four. If I went to country, there's like five. So maybe like more of a bang for your buck vote if that's the way they're thinking. Yeah. It would take them away from our category because the problem we had when I started this in 2004, we had one registered voter on the island of Jamaica. And I knew that was a problem because mm-hmm. I could tell by people that were being nominated in our category didn't necessarily reflect like the big records that were coming out of out of our industry that year. And there's a name recognition problem, which still plays today. Yeah. And there had to be a way to get the right people that were involved, involved in not only coming voting members, but also actively involved in screening committees in Jamaica. So I played a role in trying to put all that together in 2004. So basically I was excited about this new rule because I thought, okay, now this is going to be where if you're really in the reggae space and you work in the reggae space, if you only get three places to vote, you're going to go to reggae because that's like me. That's the first place I go. So I told everybody, I spoke to all the nominees this year because everybody reaches out to me about this process. We've had the conversations many, many times. And actually there are two nominees this year and Morgan Heritage can tell you this story because I tell a lot of people this story back in 2010 I took money out of my own pocket and went to Jamaica mm-hmm. and signed up voters just because to make a point when people were arguing about, oh, it's a hundred dollar membership fee. Mm-hmm. That's expensive, which I think is crazy. And two, two of the people I signed up, one was Atana and one was Rams Morgan. Besides Shane Brown and Busy Signal and Taurus Riley, there was like 50 people I signed up. So that being said, you I told personally everybody, signed I thought up. It you, was everybody, it, say you, it again. You personally signed them up. I did. I signed them up with my own money. You can ask Morgan Heritage. You can ask any of them. They remember in 2010, I did. Mm. I mean, I've gone every angle you can imagine. It's been 18 wow. years and it's all document. I've been on a small Jamaica since 2009. My first billboard article in regards to this was in 2004. Like this is something that I've been incredibly passionate about for almost 20 years. So then this year I thought, okay, well, if the vote, whoever's registered to vote will really come into the category for reggae and vote for reggae because they only get three fields. What was interesting this year is that what I've told artists every year, and this is what's crazy about Jamaica, because I live in Nashville. That's where I am right now. Mm-hmm. And this is the biggest creative community in America. We have the most influential Grammy chapter here sitting in Nashville. It's a lot like Jamaica. 
recording studios on every corner, musicians, songwriters everywhere. So the, the, like the fruit of the wealth of that type of creative community we have in Jamaica, mm-hmm. imagine if all these people signed up and they voted, this was always my dream, which is still to me a dream because it's still not happening. Yeah. But the thing I've told all the artists and some of our artists have listened, the Morgan heritage listens. There's people that have listened is I say to them, like when you're putting an album together, You've got all these people who have creative credentials that could be voters. Make sure that your team is registered to vote because as a team, you're all Mm -hmm. a part of this project. Mm -hmm. So if the nominee happens, all of you guys can vote on it because my name's on it. Of course, I'm going to want to vote for the album my name's on. I was a part of it. I was the engineer. I was the background singer. I was the guitar player. Mm -hmm. Well, again, a lot of people just don't do that. Well, this year for Soulja. What they did this year, which made this album very unique and why it did so well in their, in their subgenre of our reggae arena, is that they had all of those artists on there. Revolution is featured on there. J. Mm. Book is featured on there. Mm. Common Kings is featured on there. All of those acts were featured on there. And mind you, this year, they didn't have a dog in the fight. So if Soldier's the only one nominated, every single one of those big acts to do all this touring here yeah. and that movement voted for Soldier. And that movement and you know, so, the, that whole community mm-hmm. in the, the, the reggae California, you know, scene seems to be very big for real. So uh, and not to mention it makes the crazy sense. part. And I I think it was cranium who made the comment today mm-hmm. and kind of spot on with it because listen i've been in this for 30 years i'm a dance hall girl everybody knows me i'm hardcore dance hall. everybody Barely can hear that from how you talk christy <laughs> huh? say it again i'm saying everybody everybody can hear that from how you talk that you're a dance hall girl. I'm, and here's my thing then and so my thing is i don't sit around and listen to Roots music on a Sunday. If I go even close to Roots reggae or just reggae music, I'm going to Garnet Silk. So at the end Mm. of the day, this doesn't have to be your jam because coming out the gate, even they know wasn't my jam. I'd rather listen to Super Cat any day. You know what I mean? (laughs) But the bottom line is it's a part of what we do, so I have to respect it. Because at the end of the day, reggae music is the most influential music in the world. There's nothing bigger. We have the biggest artists in the history of music. So it shouldn't shock anybody Mm -hmm. that people from other countries and nations and colors want to play homage to this because it's like a beautiful gift from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing I've been doing for 30 years. Now, me, I worked at the major labels. I'm very big on the authenticity of reggae music. I've been in Billboard when reggae tone first came out. Wasn't a big fan. Samples were being taken from dance hall. They weren't being paid. Mm -hmm. I wasn't loving that. Like, and that's what I told Soldier. I'll work with you, but you have to you have to pay homage to to what it is that you do. And they were they were like they'd already been on tour with the Jimmy Cliffs and all these people. And prior to me meeting them, but I said like in order for me to do it, there has to be an authentic angle, yeah. and that's what, why they came to me because they knew that it was very important. When I worked at the majors, I made sure when I had budgets, I was shooting videos with one of my best friends in Jamaica, Casa and other creatives and Damian Gale and these people working with producers. Again, my best friend, Tony Kelly, all these other people taking the major label money, bringing it to Jamaica, making sure that the money would be spent in Jamaica because Jamaica looked out for me. So I'm going to look out for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when I talk about I've seen what these guys have gone through and that movement is there, it's here. It's a part of what we do. And to me, it's the, it's a form of flattery. These guys are so I, I mean, when you see the way that they act, when they even when they meet anybody, they could meet anybody from Nadine Sutherland to Stephen Marley to I don't somebody brand new on the scene and they would treat them all like as if they just met Bob Marley. Mm. They're just excited to tour. They're excited to work. They're excited to be around them. They're just some of their, I mean, so at the end of the day, yeah, it's not my jam either, but I got to respect <laughs> it because it's a part of my world. And if I'm going to be a reggae player in the, in, in the overall international market, I have to respect like even with Alba Rosie, that he's over there. He's been there forever. We've got reggae bands in New Zealand and Australia. Mm. We have Polly Buds, who's yeah. there, but he's also Caribbean. So, mm. I mean, but then we've got we've got reggae acts that are up in Canada. I actually sit, I'm actually a voter for one of their big awards up there, not the Junos, which is middle Canada, but the ones in Nova Scotia. 
you know, and I discover all these great new bands up there and they've got reggae acts up there that a lot of us don't even know about. And they're, they know the history and, you know, just mm. the richness of everything because mm. they're like, they're just students like sponges. Mm. And that's how these kids are. You know, that's what soldiers been doing for so long. And one and thing, one thing you said a while ago, Christine, uh, that really came through when I listened to their albums that they're students clear. It's clear to see. Mm -hmm, I, I, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. it might not be my jam as well as you so eloquently put it, mm -hmm. but you can see that there's a certain love and that there's a certain reverence that they have for the music. Eh, I, I probably I, I said this earlier when we were talking about it before we, we called you that. Mm -hmm. It's probably the reggaest of albums <laughs> that was nominated. <laughs> In terms of the well, song. You know, well, yeah, because yeah, because there's so that, and that's the crazy thing, because even we're influenced by stuff, too. But I mean, when you look at it, I mean, it, it is it's the problem that the part of the point I was going to make about Cranium said was, is that these guys and their movement, they all support each other on a tour together. These guys have all been on social media. Big um, I think you did not talk about the, the tweet when, when call the, the dancer artist them groupie. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, meaning like we don't we don't support each other. It's yeah. like for me, one of my biggest things that I've always said to my artists is I don't like it when they're beefing. I don't like mm. that vibe. I hate it because it's not a good message across the board. Mm -hmm. now, there's not. And then if anything gets close to being funky or something could read weird. Mm -hmm. I always tell my, no, we're staying far from that. I never want to get in the middle of that stuff because there's nothing worse. That, and then people fuel in the fire. It, it, it infuriates me because at the end of the day. I'm in love with music and I understand exactly why I'm here. I, I wouldn't have this job if it wasn't for the talent. For God's sake, I have six reggae artists tattooed to my body. Wow. We're stuck together for life. So, I mean, I take this seriously. I'm like my best marketing tool. I know who the boss is. So at the end of the day, we have to really protect and preserve our artists. Mm. And I feel like that's what, and I agree with Cranium on that because it really upsets me when I see them not support each other the way they should support each other. And then, but that's the kind of thing I saw at the reggae at the Grammys this year, where I was telling people not just the voting thing with the soldier thing, with everybody being on their album. I think the reason why it was very sensitive this year too, is that because there was such a camaraderie going on. Remember I did an album called reggae's gone country and I put Gramps on it. Gramps, I was already in Nashville and he came down here. We're always together. I've been with Morgan heritage. I produced half of their records since the late nineties. Mm. So we're very close. We talk all the time. And then of course I've known Sean since he started. And so it's like, so I've had numerous conversations with him and I've spoken in depth for the last four months with Shaggy. I was with Shaggy two months before the pandemic at a studio in New York while he was playing me the spice record. And I was the vice president at VP when spice got signed by an A&R over there. So to finally mm -hmm. see Grace's journey get to where it was yeah. and all the hard work, that Shaggy had put behind it and everybody was so anticipating it and ready for it. Like the, the emotions were high. You know yeah, what I mean? So, I think and every, with and then this the, particular year for real with yeah, Spice, as yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. And you know, Gramps had a party Friday night in Vegas. Sean had a party. They were all sending me pictures. I actually posted a picture from the Sean party to see like a picture with Sean and Gramps and Jesse and, and, and Shaggy yeah. in it. Yeah. Like that makes me, <laughs> that gets me so excited, but we need to see more of that. You know what I'm saying? And I think, um, I, I like that. I don't, I don't look at this like a, I mean, it just is what it is. The bottom line is, is that yes, for me, I go on record. Nobody would get offended by this. Everybody knows my favorite is the music from Jamaica. That's why I did it. That's why mm -hmm. I'm involved. But at the end of the day, I always say this, I I'm a Grammy nominator producer. Cause I was at Def Jam and I did an album called Def Jamaica. And it's the same thing with Reggae's Gone Country. I made everybody do these type. I brought all these people more to what I like to call the reggae party. So more eyes on our genre, the more we win. So if these, these guys want to go out there and cheerlead and promote reggae music to the masses on that level, God be it. Because at the end of the day, it helps it open up doors for all these younger artists coming out here. Or like, that's why Chronix took inside what he did. Yeah. Because one of the first tours open to him in America were by these guys. They were like <laughs> begging him to come out with them, trying mm -hmm. to do anything they could to work with him because they just loved and respected what he did. And same thing with Kabaka. Kabaka's out right now with Revolution, yeah. who sells the most in America outside of everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it does, like I said, again, it doesn't have to be our jam, but it just, it, and as reggae and we're the music of love, I don't want to sound sappy or corny or cliche, but it really <laughs> is because when people listen to it, it's that feel good music that you can't be mad. It chills you yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Any, no matter what and country there, there's you're There's a from, lot of that on this album. Mm -hmm. 
you, you know, so and yeah. that's the thing. And to see us all kind of ripping at, at each other and divided. So like in the things that are said are are kind of it's it's not that's not who we are. That is not who we are as a reggae fraternity. That is not who we are. Ari, any question for no, Christy? No, I think Christy is basically covered everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I talk a lot because I'm so oh, that's, that's no, cool. That's cool. We like that. We like that. Been very insightful because yeah. you know mm-hmm. you you just see because as Nara said we 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 constantly have this conversation every year. You got yeah. like a broken record, mm-hmm. and you're just like, I know. Oh my God, guys, come on! Because even me, I say. Sean, um, Sean Paul or Spice shouldn't even be in the same category as as Soja, Etana, Jesse and Grams. Like they mm-hmm. do completely two different music, you know. So obviously it's just like you know it's a reggae album, it's a reggae category. Of course, the reggae band, and as Nara said, the reggae, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reggae yeah. album one, you mm-hmm. know. So I just feel like. There's so much more that needs to happen. There's so much more, so much more that can happen. And, you know, we're just- well, here's the, not to call you, here's the thing I want to share with you guys. It's not so, this is the, this is the point I've been trying to drive home that we're getting, it's almost like we're getting distracted. And if we fall asleep on this point, it could be devastating to us. The situation is, is that we, we, we could lose our category at the Recording Academy. And let me explain why. Hmm. The, um, the, right now, mm-hmm. we have a field with one category in it. Now, mind you, they had world music. It was one field, one category. Just this <laughs> year, that. they changed it. Yeah. They gave them two categories, but they changed it to global performance single and global performance album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what sits in world music? It's like a chili of seven different genres. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Soka sits there. Afro beats, beats. sits there. Mm-hmm. People like Angelique Kijo. Talk about an upset last night where people were like, what? Mind you, the single was won by a woman from India. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Angelique Kijo actually one but remember in both of those categories you had burner boy whiz kid Mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's like and they didn't win and that's crazy to people but here's the thing we have low submission rates and in our category they could just go okay well you know what It, it it there's a very small staff that runs the recording academy in la so adding categories they won't do because it requires more work Deleting them <laughs> takes away the work so it's easier to do. <laughs> Think if they say, well, you know, we'll just get rid of this because of the low submissions. Let's just go throw them in that global performance chili. Can you imagine? And they wouldn't it would be, it would just, mm-hmm. there's just, that's the thing I'm saying. The competition Let's focus would be even, would be even rougher. The thing is, and I said it to people before, the reason why there's a separate Latin Grammys is because the Latin music community, they come together and force where the Grammys had to deal with them. Mm-hmm. So for us, yeah, no, we're not going to get that, but we should at least preserve our category because I'm saying it again. People say they think that the Grammys doesn't matter. It's foolish, this, that, and the third. That's crazy. This is the highest music accolade you can get in the world. Mm-hmm. And I want to see Jamaicans, reggae artists, whomever in the reggae world be able to get it. But the point is, there is no new artist or old reggae artist that doesn't deserve the ability to attain one of these because mm. they're super talented. I mean, the, I mean, there's things that reggae artists have to do that pop artists don't have to do. And I mean, as far as their creativity, like these guys have access to certain money and budgets where they can just hire whatever producer, whatever songwriter. When somebody like Egyptian goes in the studio, he has no choice but to write his own songs. Mm. The other people, country artists don't always have to do that. Pop mm-hmm. artists don't always have to do that. Mm-hmm. Reggae artists are forced to be creative on all levels. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, why shouldn't they be awarded Grammys? Why shouldn't they be able to be up for them? And well, at the, the end of the is, day, is- I've been saying it for 18 years. We have the ability to move the pendulum and we have. We've made such a stride because when I started this campaign, Morgan Heritage had never been nominated. Atana and Taurus had just started coming out in 2008. They used to be a part of my speech where I wanted to get them exposure and all the different things I did. When I started the Welcome to Jamrock Cruise for Damien, I actually did an event where I worked it into my programming where I brought the Grammy membership on the ship because the Marlies let me do it. And I had (laughs) Grammy Pro on there. What we did is we had a private mixer with the managers, industry people and the artists explaining to them how membership works. This was in 2013. Mm. And then Grammy Pro taped and interviewed new artists like Taurus Riley and Tana and all these people and put it on, on Grammy.com so the voters could get familiar with who they were. Mm. I mean, you name it. I've tried it. I've tried it all. Rabbits out of my hat, back backflips. <laughs> and I still barely get anybody to actually 
Easy, easy, Christy, six thirty, easy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm Christy. saying, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you say we still have work highest... to do, but we've made strides. Yeah, we've made, we've strides. made strides. But ahead. I mean, you're saying that is the highest <laughs> award. I'm thinking that probably we need to focus on getting uh, an award. Or a, a, the, I mean, I think his conscience bring it up and say, you know, war, awards that no reggae music, no Jamaican music, probably we need to elevate it to the status of a Grammy where we understand that, you know, there are different factors and elements that go into the voting and understanding and the process and the campaigning to even just get nominated. You know, maybe we just probably need to look at just opening and diversifying and being, um, I mean, that's a no you know, elevating others to the to the, the equivalent of a Grammy, you know, so that Grammy people, even it could be even a feeder, just like the Golden Globes, um, you know, Critics' Choice mm-hmm. Award, all them other things, there's like a feeder to the Oscar because <clears throat> everybody thinks that the Oscar is the highest award for acting. Maybe we need to probably think that, you know, they, they Arama and they, um, Jacob, if they have one, any other local or, where they call it, regional award for reggae, we we'll probably need to to support that so that maybe the Grammy the, the Grammy board too can also see that and see that oh okay it's a feeder I'm just thinking you know there are several things <laughs> well no I I mean I have to tell you I would I would love to see a an award show because we've had it like I said we had the Tamikas in New York and we've had the Aramas and stuff like that I would love to see a more a, a reggae award show. The problem is that we've had in the past is artists didn't support it. Yeah. So then whoever mm-hmm. showed up won. You know, I mean, if we did it, like people came to me, I'm like, look, I would, I know exactly, I dream of it, exactly how I would do it. It requires financing and it requires, it would literally set it up more like, more like how the Grammys is set up, but it has to be very transparent. Mm-hmm. Because remember, the one thing that everybody has to understand is there's only 13,000 of us voters. I've been a Grammy voter for 18 years. It's not an easy thing to be able to maintain it and keep it and do it or even now become it. And so I'm like a unicorn. So only, the only way people can win is to be voted by these 13,000 people. But the interesting thing about these 13,000 people are these are real music creator creators. For example, I run Grammy marketing pa- campaigns for all genres. I ran it this year for John Baptiste. I ran, ran it this year for Silk Sonic. I ran it this year for Angelique Kijo. And a lot of people in our backyard probably watched the Grammys and said, who's this John Baptiste guy? Mm -hmm. He was nominated for 11 Grammys and walked home with seven. Um, But the 13,000 voters, they're musically eclectic and they know all the music that's out there and they know these artists. They're on top of a lot of that. It's Mm -hmm. not just these random people that aren't in the know. The problem that we're also having is, like I said, in our category, we have some people that know who to vote for, but then we have people that are in there that are looking at other stuff too. And like I said, the soldier guys went in there and voted. The (laughs) problem that we used to have in the past when it wasn't just three fields is yeah, the name recognition thing. I used to give the analogy. It was like a white guy from Minnesota in his sixties that used to listen to steel pulse and go, Oh my God, they were my favorite in the seventies. I'm voting for them. That Mm. was the issue that was going on. Now that we've limited it, especially with the Marley's, we we should be able to change it. But the problem is, You'd be shocked at how there are some people that were nominated that didn't weren't even able to vote for themselves this year because they weren't voting members. Mm. Mm. But it ain't just us. Let's not just put that on regular. Let me be very clear, <laughs> because almost all the rappers and all the hip, a lot of people you see out there walking the red carpet nominated and all that are not voting either. So it's like it's not like just poo poo shame on us. No, no, no. A lot of a lot of musicians do that. It's it's just the, it's just what it is. And that's why I said most of the people who take it seriously are people like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, Carol King, like those type of musicians. Now Rogers, those are people that always will vote, will always keep their membership withstanding. Like it's like it's it's that level of people who really care about it. And that's the thing. Unless people pay their dues and keep it up, and nine times out of ten, management or other companies will pay it for them. Mm. And rem- I actually get calls from the academy every year. If there's certain artists that in my backyard that need to re-up, they'll call me to remind them. Oh, and you can ask them. I call and remind them. Ask Sean Paul. Ask my artist, Amy Marley. <laughs> well, I be calling them all the time. They know when I get those calls. By the way, guys, you, know, you got to re-up your dues. Do you think, do you think mm. this, I try everything. Do you think this, <laughs> well, you, you talk about, you know, the method of, you know, keeping up membership. Do you think this is 
the word I'm looking for, and it's manageable. Sustainable. But do you think it's it's mm. sustainable for a country like Jamaica, third world country? Developing, I prefer developing. Developing, see there, yeah. because you know, <laughs> I'm guessing that that would be probably some of the complaints from people who yeah, are eligible. Yeah, what's the, com- hey, well, what's the complaint? Yeah, we have money every year for keep up my membership. And I'm just US. hundred US. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, here, yeah, here's my yeah, but here's my thing. Look, let's let's talk about who we're talking about and hate call out names. Let's look at the top tier of our artists. Let's just take twenty of them. That it could take fifty of them to make the change. Look what they spend on clothes. Exactly. What they spend on, like I said, if this really mm-hmm. comes hey, up, I pay for it every year know, them too. Probably just get that, them just, probably just get a loan for their music for them. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they make. Let me tell you, a lot of reggae artists. There's a lot of reggae artists out there that make a lot, lot more money than me, and I've been paying my dues. Now, and not only have I been paying my voting dues for 18 years, I was an associate member, which we now call a professional member. I used to just pay to be a part of the academy, and I didn't even get the fucking perks. Why well, didn't even curse? <laughs> <laughs> What perk? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know it's gonna come. My what bad, are these bad. perks you speak like, of, Christy? Just beat me out like a rap song. <laughs> no, no, yes, no, 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 Oh, what, what what curse did I say? No, 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 well, ask about the perks, Christy. <laughs> oh, how much does it cost? No, the perks. What are some of the perks you get at being like the a, a member? Okay, so here's the deal. If, if you are, okay, sorry, my bad. So yeah. if you're a voting member, because you have to remember, the Academy is a nonprofit. So the money that you're donating is a tax write-off. This money goes to education in schools. It goes to Music Cares. It goes to Grammy. You're, you, during the pandemic, there was insurance that was available for music, out of work musicians, um, diff, uh, um, artists, everybody in the industry that was available oh, to them. Not mm. to mention there was discounts with different um, companies that merge with the academy. Um, there's also we get first shot at tickets. They because remember the tickets don't go to the public. The voter the voters are the ones that get the access to that. You mm. know what I mean? So there's a lot of different perks that come with being a voting member. So your membership isn't just a vote. There's a lot of other things you get access. You're, you're part of a chapter. Now you're invited to these exclusive events. Me and mm. we were just at an event here in Nashville. And then you get to then mind you, can you imagine? So if you're a part of that, because mind you, if you're in Jamaica, you can register to be a part of the Florida chapter. When the Florida chapter does an event, if you're in Florida or you want to make Networking. it New York, cause whatever, mm. you, that's where you go more often. You can go to these parties and in these rooms, it's fully catered, it's drinks, food, and it's voters. Mm-hmm. So you're in a room now with these people being able to schmooze. And mind you, there's a lot of people that are in our industry that do it. I mean, Gramps, I taught him, he took full advantage of it. You know what I mean? Because he's like, look, if it's available to me and I can do it, I'm going to do it. Well, clearly not as much as Soja <clears throat> did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Like I said, if I had to be a gambling woman, I'd say it's because... They pretty much had that whole genre, their subgenre on that album. Mm. And those guys all support each other. It's unbelievable. So I'm pretty sure they all went out to vote. Uh, Christy. Wow. Oh, oh, Javs has a, a question for you, Christy. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So, Christy, you mentioned that we need to preserve the category, uh, the reggae category um, at the Grammys, right? So, what are some mm-hmm. of the steps that we can take to actually do this? Like, is it possible? Well, it is possible. And then here's the thing, it's strength in numbers. I mean, we we all have to show that we're voters and we care and we get more involved with the Academy and the things they have going on. And I hate to say this, but it's true. Doing something like what we're doing right now, tearing apart somebody that's in our category, uh, it doesn't look good for us because we're not supposed to represent that. Music has no boundaries. <laughs> Music is supposed to make people feel good. We're not supposed to rip each other apart like this. Mm. You know what I mean? So this is not a good look for us. And I'm not saying this is going to cause us to lose our category. That's dramatic. But I mean, <laughs> I just we have to show strength and unity, like how the Latin mm-hmm. grant, the, the Latin community gets behind each other and supports each other. And there are numbers. They're out there voting. They're showing up at these events. They're making things happen. You know what I mean? That We have to do that, too. We have to look out for each other and stick together. We have to find a way. Again, it might not be our jam. And this guy you might not like, but you need to figure out a way to work with a guy you don't like. 
Mm. You know what I mean? To be able for the betterment of what's taking care of all of us, reggae music. Mm. <laughs> Christy, give thanks for speaking with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you for Thank taking you the for time. Having me. Let me have, just ramble on. Have, what's that? I said, thanks for having me and just let me ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Because I'm sure. And it wasn't a ramble. It you're, wasn't a ramble. You're, yeah, you're dropping and, yeah. knowledge and you're you're clearing what you're saying. James, I just hope that the, the, the listeners and the viewers will understand and have a bit more insight into what goes into Grammys and getting a Grammy and that whole process. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people out there, they're just out there talking and they don't really know what's happening. coming back this month so i'd love to come in the studio yeah man for sure but before you do that christy you have to make sure i say fly away out to puerto rico too <laughs> no, I'm not, or, I'm wherever I'm, I'm, no, just, or wherever else i've been looking for i'm telling you you guys are doing an amazing job i've been uh, looking forward to getting interviewed by you guys a lot of people are talking about you you guys are movers and shakers and why this was so important and thank you so much for letting me talk because i know you reach a younger audience and you're educating the youth so kudos to you guys Congratulations to you, and I appreciate everything you guys do. Chris, I'm here for creator stock. We're, we're not, we're not <laughs> educating no, no, nobody. No, we're no, haters. Our bad my mind. Instagram. Man. Watch <laughs> me. I'm about to go po post y'all. <laughs> and I gotta keep following you. And you give follow thanks. me too. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night, y'all. Yeah, you too. You too. All right, bye. <laughs> As I was Christy Barber, people. I, I don't think any more needs to be said. Nothing. I think everything that needs to be yeah. said was exhausted. Mm -hmm. a while ago very eloquently mm -hmm. and very nashville and guess what <laughs> you got it from a white person exactly <laughs> what more do you want what more do you want <laughs> we not in a sense right we not no remember we said said, uh, 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 remember that's us <laughs> So, so make somebody with sense come from talk. a white person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who knows what with she's knowledge. talking about. You knowledge. Know? Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Dropping oh. gems. Shout out to Christy Barber. Uh, add it up when you move, baby, say less. Make a bread, I want to invest. You could be my little princess, but if I'm a spin it, I'm going to need a little interest. A little interest. Baby, say less. When me did a struggle longer, God didn't know us Regular me day a frost and I make no money But me never bring me problems to nobody Hold me one from the lonely road, me a chaddy Me fit tell you about the burden load when me carry Regular me day a frost and I make no money Get to use a road that for free life now Cause uh, you feel like you don't play no loose ball No push in like yeah. mm -hmm. and crack Nobody get serious when you lose full of talent But nobody no believe in us